Hello everyone. I want to tell you a story. I'm not really one for talking about other people's products as much nowadays. It's something I've kind of moved away from just to focus on more of my own stuff. But the thing that's different about this one is that it was created by my apprentice. That's right. Ooh, but no one knew I had an apprentice. So this one might feel a bit familiar to some of my own work coming to you now from Charon from Just 3D Things who I've mentioned on the channel many times in the past. If that name sounds familiar, it's because they've basically been, you know, sticking around as a friend and as someone I've been giving advice to for years now. So before I tell you the story, I just want to let you know that Sharon has agreed to give us as a community an exclusive discount on this as well. So if you want it, the code CURT24 is available for a couple of weeks and I have an affiliate link in the description. So if you use that link, then you'll be supporting both of us at the same time. So Sharon first appeared to me through my Discord DMs when he was asking for advice on doing a presentation about Blender to his school or college at the time, I think it was. And we got along quite well. You know, we share a lot of similar interests. And then I also figured out quite quickly that Charon had a lot that he could contribute to me in the way of teaching me more about the math side of things, because that's something I've traditionally had quite a lot of difficulty with. Mental maths, pattern construction, stuff like that. It became very apparent that Charon was actually excellent at this, like way above grade compared to most other people I've met in the community. It kind of came as a bit of a surprise, really. This random kid somewhere in South India with an uncanny ability to make any pattern out of Blender shader notes. It was like this kind of hidden talent, like this giftedness just kind of packaged away out of sight, out of mind by someone who didn't really have much of a platform. Now, these are the kinds of skills that a lot of people are looking for in work. And to be honest, Charon is available for work if you want to contact him. But I recognize that. And over time, I tried to give Charon nudges to try and get him to package up some of his talent so that it would be accessible to other people and that he could also get something back for that. I think Charon always liked the idea, but life is complicated around his age. He's moved to the UK, he's done university here, and it's come to the point now where because the job market is so difficult to get into, especially for 3D work, and we all know how uh, disastrous some corners of the industry are for layoffs, I think the freedom of independent creation kind of became a bit more attractive. So again, through many conversations, I continued giving him nudges to say, look, there are a lot of people in the Blender community who would love what you make. I know a lot of people that would find this extremely useful because the infinite variety of procedural tiling is something that applies to so many different types of projects. And again, architectural visualization more than any. These patterns can be applied to any material type. It's not like these are just all brick or all ceramic or all stone. It's a system that can be completely layered with other types of shader nodes. And it's not like this is the first time that Charon's work has come to light because in the past I've done a product called Procedural Patterns. Momich also needs an update now, but Charon contributed some work to that. And to be honest, some of the best stuff in there, animated raindrops and different types of tiling again. See, even at that point, Charon was still trying to package up some of that genius into resourceful groups for people. And he did release some of that onto Gumroad. The problem is it was always kind of, I don't know, not very well refined or not well marketed. But again, it got to a critical point in his life now where he's looking for work, it's hard trying to find some. Is he going to stay here in the UK? Is he going to go back to India? And I met him on a couple of occasions, but the most recent recent time I met him, I decided to do something slightly different. You see, it just so happened that, well, maybe it was fate. The only realistic time we could have met was the exact day I was planning to release Hex Scatter, which is the recent collaboration tool with myself and Chris. It's our new solution to procedural projections around objects while combining seamless texture scattering techniques. And we're really happy with the results. And I'm actually impressed with some of the things people have made with it so far. To name one of those, call in on Twitter slash X showed that you could actually use Hex Scatter for terrain, which I didn't really like properly test or think about like in a serious way because I was focusing on the smaller scale use cases but it turns out it works really well for that so that's something I really want to explore but anyway I thought it'd be interesting as like a kick to try and get Charon to actually kind of finish his work on the complete orchestra of tileable patterns and get it out there by watching me release hex scatter so he's one of the first people, no, I'd say he's the first person from our community group that's actually come into my new studio space and has been allowed to look around and see how things are. Obviously, I've only shown a bit on the second channel, haven't shown you as much, but uh, it's a pretty cool space. And I sat him down next to where I work and I let him watch as I wrote out and worked through release checklists. And he was allowed to see the immediate feedback from people coming through the comment feed. He was allowed to have a look at the analytics to see what money was being made on the day. And the reason I wanted just to have him sit there 
there and watch was to help him get out of his own headspace. You see, this is a problem that a lot of creators have when fighting perfectionism. It's hard to know how to put an end to something or how to take a step over that boundary. When I sit there and I release something and if I encounter a problem, I'll say, ah, it doesn't matter, I'll do this instead. And then if someone actually watches you overcome that hurdle, I think there's something much more direct about that teaching method than just hearing someone tell you what to do, if that makes sense. Observation as a learning technique is something that we've evolved to do. Language hasn't been around for all of human history. Well, actually, I kind of suppose that depends where you define human in the chain of history, but the point is observation is very important. So in this way, I thought about it as a teaching exercise for Charon. And weirdly, it seems to have worked because right after this day, he went back and he had, I think, the most productive run he's ever had. He literally sat there, grinded, he suddenly took all the lessons on board. So here's another thing. Charon, sorry to call you out, has a pretty big problem with the validation loop, where he's going to say he'll do something before he actually does it, and then he doesn't end up doing it because he already got the dopamine from saying he was going to do it. That suddenly massively reduced. The productivity increased. He didn't overshare too much with me. I got the feeling he got quite tired through the process, but he carried on, and then he got the product done to a state where it could be shared. And I found that really interesting because I've never really done mentorship. It's not really something I'm super interested in providing as a service. I might do it one day. But, you know, at my core, I'm still I'm like highly introverted, socially quite shy, unless the situation demands it, like at the Blender conference, where I have to like expend a year's worth of energy in three days. But I was quite proud to see this sudden transition, because now what it means is the Blender community gets something useful and of high value. And one of my best friends now has a chance to relieve their struggles, because it opens another door for receiving some income. But the thing is, Charon doesn't have a massive audience. And since I've put so much effort into sitting with him in every single call, giving him validation for years, giving him direction. I feel like this is kind of my product as well, in a way. So that's why I'm making an exception to share it with you in a dedicated video, in the hopes that you may want to check it out, see if it can help your projects, see if it can fit into your pipeline. And like I said, there's an affiliate link below. So if you use that link specifically, then I'll get a percentage of every sale. So in that way, Charon gets some money, I get what I would consider payment for the mentorship, and then you also get a cheaper price on the resource. Now, on the matter of mentorship, this is something interesting to me. Charon is not the only person that's come to me looking for advice to do with products and sharing things with people. Actually, quite a lot of people in the Blender community have done that at some point, even people that I don't think you would expect. I'm not going to name them because I haven't asked their permission, but there are quite a few product developers in the community, I think more so the more recent generation, that before they've put products out or at the start of their product journey, I've received messages from them from Instagram, Discord, etc., asking for advice on how to present it to people. A couple of those have actually gone on to do really well, and I think other people have taken different directions. Actually, I will expose one person in a slightly lesser way because I actually really like them as well. You will know them as Smouse. 1st of June 2023 asked me for some advice on an approach to communicating with other creators in respect to releasing a product, giving free copies away, affiliate codes, etc. Do you think that's a good way to approach it or do you think something should be considered differently? So I did a whole discussion video sent to Smouse uh, to try and give some info, which is actually unlisted now. So that's fun. They got something a little bit private. For someone else as well, I got a message from uh, another Blender YouTuber who's pretty big, but they didn't really have much experience with putting out products. I gave her they were trying to do research on how to make money with Blender. The interesting thing is after I gave them a ton of information, they very immediately afterwards made a video for their audience with how to make money with Blender and then included some of the things they had learned. I found that a little bit weird because, you know, doing a video like that means you know a lot, but it came right after asking other people for the advice, so felt a little bit pretentious. You know another one, Ben, Cartesian Caramel. I'm very proud of Ben. I won't go into anything personal. There was a period of time where it would be beneficial for Ben to have an independent income stream. So I was there to provide advice on him getting set up with Gumroad. And I know a lot of people in my audience know about Ben. Sometimes you watch his stream, sometimes you like his videos. Chances are you've probably seen his content whether you realize it or not, because a lot of his visual effects have then been stolen and then re-uploaded on other platforms, especially TikTok, which is a shame, but it kind of happens. It's just the nature of things. The point is, weirdly, I feel like I've kind of become this father figure for a lot of new creators coming in and trying to package up their intellect and their skill so that it can be more accessible to other people in the community. And I like this role, not in the way of it feels like, hey, I'm important, but more in the way of I get satisfaction from value being created. That's always exciting to me because it feels like the number of possibilities or possible things you can create expands as people share their ideas and share their tools and their like secret tips and knowledge in accessible and fun ways. With that in mind, I found over time that I get more fulfillment from that really more than anything else. And it ties into my recent revelations, one of my discussion videos about ways to kind of reject 
social media and content algorithms and just focus on creating value for people. Anyway, for the last section, let's just talk a little bit about Tile Factory and what you can get. So basically, like I said, it's a collection of pretty much any type of major tile pattern you can think of. And every single one of these has an extensive amount of parameterization. I like that word now. To make it more accessible for people, Charon has taken all of the different material combos. These are things like, you know, colorful materials for different generalized surfaces and then pre-prepared variations using the tile patterns and the different materials to give you a wide range of things that you can easily just drag and drop from the asset browser. So again, that's what makes it amazing if you're doing like interior design or arc viz, because it's very familiar to you in the way that just like any other material pack, you've got the asset library right there, but hidden underneath that is the real power of the product, which is these very well-crafted and well-defined node groups. And you know, we're a massive fan of proceduralism on this channel. It really does save a lot of effort when compared to texturing workflows. Texturing tiles can be quite tricky sometimes, depending on how you UV map your objects, because you've got to be careful with like the UV scaling of the islands so that the tiles line up properly. With procedural materials, the only thing you really need to worry about in that way is just the mapping method. But it is typically easier to maintain a consistent scale between all the tiles. You'll see in some of the store page imagery that Sharon's been doing a lot of pretty realistic renders just to demonstrate how all of these work, and I'm sure you'll find them exciting. So I won't take any more of your time, but if you want to check it out, like I said, affiliate link below, Tile Factory, is now available, and I know that Sharon will be grateful for any support you can provide. And of course, if you have any requests, feel free to leave them down below. And if you made it to the end of this video, of course, it's traditional here to put an emoji in the comments to show that you made it to the end. Maybe this one put some kind of tile or brick related emoji, because I feel like that will make sense. Remember to subscribe, have a great day, and I will hopefully soon be bringing you some more information and news about useful developments, tools, features, anything in the Blender and CG space. Stay safe, and I will see you next time.